from uh, researchers' point of view, the Lafferty's were one of a string of fundamentalist murders, and uh, they certainly um, were a, a dangerous uh, duo, the two brothers, but they weren't the last of them. More stuff has happened. It's, it's just Joseph Smith and Brigham Young put out teachings that when taken to their ultimate extreme would lead them, lead followers to commit murder. And it doesn't mean all the polygamists are murderers. We don't need afraid of all of them. <laughs> they are not to kill everyone. But these killings related to the temple ritual of where you had for years in the temple, the oath of uh, swearing on an oath to not reveal the secrets, not to fight against the church, to be faithful and all those things, uh, lest your throat be slit. And so there's an undercurrent of um, this idea of people being killed for uh, disobeying God. So we see this in the um, Lafferty murders, where the one sister, uh, sister-in-law, is uh, persuading the other sister-in-law to leave the group. Uh, and helps her to, where did she go to? Uh, Florida? Was it Florida she went to, I think? Yeah, I think it and, was. Yeah, and uh, so that made her an apostate, which would have brought her under the curse of the temple oath of uh, offering your life as a sacrifice to have your throat slit for revealing and helping people to apostatize. So that was Brenda, Brenda's big sin, is apostatizing from the apostatizing from the true church, fighting against the true prophet. Of course, in this case, it was Lafferty, um, not the regular Mormon church. And uh, there is this undercurrent in Mormonism that produces these violent acts. It doesn't mean all the Mormons are violent, and it doesn't mean that you need to be afraid of your next door neighbor. It's in these extremist cults that take it so letter of the law serious on all these covenants they make that gets some of them to this extreme measure of murder. But then I guess the question would be, were they already a little unstable mentally and more susceptible to ending up killing someone? But I just want to emphasize this isn't all the Mormons. Right. I, I have a question for you, uh, Sandra. So going back in like uh, LDS history, if we think about uh, the Missouri War, or even uh, Joseph Smith having the Army of the Lord of Hosts, which rivaled the United States military at that time. Was there any uh, beliefs of Joseph Smith that uh, are kind of consistently being played out with modern fundamentalists, like uh, in terms of restoring the kingdom of God on earth with Doctrine and Covenants one, Section 132 or anything of that nature? Well, it was a gradual militarizing of Mormonism and becoming more radical. Uh, at the start of Mormonism, I don't believe Joseph was promoting uh, anything that radical, but as they got thrown out of different towns, after they had experienced uh, some of these um, attacks on their own people, like the Hans Mill massacre, there's things like that that push them into this ideology of uh, we're the persecuted true followers of God and finally to the point that we need to protect the kingdom of God and we're going to go into a forced submission to the kingdom of God. So they become more radicalized as the uh, Mormons are thrown out from place to place. Of course, the Mormons never ask why were they thrown out from place to place, but I um, <laughs> There were reasons they were expelled from different places. They had their own bad stuff going on on their own camp. Um, certainly, it was taken too far by both sides. But when Joseph set up the temple ritual in Nauvoo in the 1840s, by then, he certainly was much more militaristic. He had set up the uh, Nauvoo Legion and made himself, um, what was it, uh, lieutenant general of the Nauvoo Legion. <laughs> and there's paintings of him on his horse holding his sword up there, charging out, you know, it looks pretty militant. So it was a growing militancy in Mormonism. And then when they came West, 
uh, of course, they're fleeing the law and they leave the United States. A lot of Mormons seem to forget this. They weren't supportive of America. I mean, they left the United yeah. States and came to Mexico. And by a quirk of fate, the next year, uh, the United States acquired the territory and the Mormons were back under the rule of the United States, which caused conflicts because they wanted to have their own law and their own rule in Utah, which was just a territory at that point. And uh, it put them direct in conflict with the government um, that led to all sorts of problems. It was part of the problem of having the Mountain Meadow Massacre when uh, Mormons killed a bunch of immigrants coming through the state, well, the territory. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So it's a long history yeah. of uh, conflict and wars or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. Dan, did you have any thoughts or what are you thinking so far? Yeah, there was a specific question regarding the Lafferty brothers. Um, Sandra, you may be aware of this, kind of tying into this the whole topic of uh, the throat slitting thing that was going on in the temple. Um, in uh, I can't remember what year it was done, but Jeffrey R. Holland was in an interview with, I believe, uh, BBC, where they were asking him, were there penalties? This was right around the time that... Uh, Mitt Romney was going for president, and so they were asking Jeffrey R. Holland, were these penalties in the temple? Were they in the temple? And, he, and Jeffrey finally admits it, that they were, but they're not anymore. So the reason I'm even bringing this up is just one to validate that we have appropriate authorities of LDS uh, confirming this. But the question I wanted to offer to you is we would kind of look at the Lafferty brothers utilizing this principle in an extremist, radical type of way. Are you aware of any way that the LDS church would look at this slitting your throat in, in a, I hate saying an appropriate way, but is there a right way to look at this in the LDS faith? Was there ever a time that the LDS ch church executed this themselves? Like what, what would be the difference between the right way to look at that and the extremist way, which would be Lafferty's? Any thoughts? Well, under Brigham Young, it was not a church-instituted practice. Uh, okay. I mean, it's not like where you have uh, uh, Catholics running um, Spain or something. You know, <laughs> it, it wasn't an official program of the administration. However, there we have stories of bishops who sanctioned blood atonement in cases where the man committed adultery repeatedly and the church leaders in this area told him he had gone too far and the only way he could get forgiven would be to have his throat slit. And uh, I mean, I can't prove it from a court in case because uh, they didn't go to court on any of it. Uh, but I believe we can document early examples under Brigham Young of people who had their throat slit for disobeying the church. But that was not done through an official channel that would go up to the top of the church. It would have been a local thing that would have been done. Okay. And this was, in this whole uh, throat slitting thing was eradicated, I think around 1989 or somewhere around there. Would you have an idea? Uh, well, well, Okay, we got to watch how we word this because yeah. people will think they were slitting throats up till then. Sure, sure, sure. Of course. Okay, they were not slitting throats in the 1900s. Uh, they, it, the temple ceremony had an oath in it uh, from early days that uh, you promised not to reveal these things on the threat of death of having your throat slit. Yeah, They modified it to where it wasn't as gory as the original wording in about 1912 or something. The oath where you symbolically in the temple drew your thumb across your throat to symbolize ways that life could be taken was in the ceremony until 1990. They ah. were not slitting people's throat up until 1990. <laughs> they were doing the motion yes. of it in a uh, pantomime. Uh, in this ceremony of the ways that life could be taken if you broke your oaths. Gotcha. So they're saying not 1990. Okay. 
Okay. So the problem we have with this nowadays is that everyone that went through the temple ceremony after 1990 may very well tell you, you are crazy and listening to horrible liars because they've been through the temple for years and they never experienced this. Yeah. Well, right, because they went through after 1990. Hmm. We have tape recordings of it beforehand. I mean, there's no doubt that that was in there. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, all the Mormon historians will concede that those were part of the elements of the ceremony before 1990. Mm-hmm. 